What's up y'all, KRC Pinto here, hanging out with Axe Ice once again. Today, we'll be taking a look at different patterns in Dragon Ball Fighters. So, the thing about Dragon Ball as a fighting game is that every character has a, their own unique tool set, but there are a lot of things across the cast that don't change very much. So, we wanted to touch on some of the things that show up character to character so that you can have this base of knowledge every time you go into a match. So, Axe Ice, let's talk about the most basic frame data regularity in the game, which is jabs. <laughs> Roshi is <just> blowing you <laughs> up. Yeah, jab is usually uh, the most universal thing. It's the fastest in the game, which is six frames. Some characters have seven, eight, ten. Most typically, the next fastest is seven, which is a few characters in the game. You want to keep this important because um, sometimes you could beat on an opponent's one or two frames faster because of it. You are able to um, keep your opponent's pressure and down with certain jabs because some jabs has far range like Jiren and then you have certain jabs like 17 which is very tiny. So even though they both frame six, range does make a big difference. And one of the crucial implications of this is that because a good portion of the cast, not all, but I think, what would you say, like 80% have a six frame jab? Yeah, 80, 85. Because of that fact, uh, negative five becomes the safe value. So when you're practicing things in training mode, if you see something is more negative than negative five, it becomes an unsafe thing to do, correct? Yeah, so if it's not zero, which a 6M is, you are able to, if you anything that's five, negative 5 or under, so negative 4, negative 3 to zero, you are able to block. In some cases, like this move is negative 2, you are able to backdash and not lose your turn completely. And it, it, it depends on how fast and what they do too. But if you were to have a move that ends in negative seven on block, you now will get jabbed back if the opponent has a six frame jab before you can block, correct? Yes, because this move is negative 17 and I, I just can't completely do anything and I will get punished for it. It's very, very dangerous. So be careful of those uh, frame advantages. A lot of the times there's ways to make it safe. So usually most specials uh, are are safe so keep that in mind every character has a, a safe move where they could they could do something like that so this is like the fundamental feature to building out a block string when you're really practicing a team trying to learn a character and understanding how to layer your offense is making sure that you end in a frame advantage that's negative five or higher or negative five is it high? it's higher but it's lower. Uh, that that's a weird yeah. thing. <laughs> From negative five to zero <laughs> frames. Right. Either negative five through zero or plus frames is how you want to end your block strings so that you can retain your turn. There we go. I got there. There's only a rare case in this game where certain moves are plus. So for example, uh, 17 projectile, he is plus six. And because of that, I'm able to start my move with a whole medium before they could even la land a jab at me. So if I throw this in their face and I mash M, I'm plus by so much, I could throw out a, a, a medium move. And there's only a few characters in the game that has plus moves like Bardock, 17, and and maybe a one or two other characters in the cast. Kefla has one too. So let's move on to another pattern that shows up in this game. Um... Not every character, but a lot of characters have moves that counter. And those counters tend to come out on the same frame, which is... Could you remind me what frame that is? That is frame 4. Most counters in this game is frame 4. And most... Some counters or DP are frame 1. And when you have a frame 1 counter, you are able to uh, steal some turns and steal some things that's completely not true. For example, a vanish, a hit into a vanish isn't true, but you are unable to 2H it, for example. So I block this and mash 2H, I will get countered. But because Jaren has a frame one counter, he's able to block it and then punish it. 
for example, like that. And a lot of characters could do this surprisingly if you have a DP, aka a frame one invincibility move. Some characters, even like Brawly, who has a frame one anti air, that if you do the same vantage setup, which I will show you. So if my if my opponents vanish, you are able to frame one, grab them, and then punish them. And my friend here has a clip we could even show you at a tournament scene that came in very handy. So we will show you right now. Alright. Oh. Ooh. Oh! Wow! Oh, and Sammy's popping off right now. Just level one. So let's take a second real quick to just distinguish uh, a DP from a counter, just for clarity's sake. So a DP is a move that is frame one invincible. So things like uh, the Gohan's uppercut series, uh, Cooler's knee that flies up out of the air. And the term could apply to other frame one counters like Jiren's EX right there. But a counter- And 17 frame one super. Right. But a counter is something that sets up and then requires you to hit them for it to activate. So like when Gohan uses his DP, he throws out that uppercut no matter what. Um, other characters like Jiren require you to make contact before the move actually does anything. And yeah, so there's uh, quite a few things in the game that lets you take your turn back. Some of them is very dangerous, so they block, they can punish you. But in this situation, we're going to show you how to take your turn back after a vanish. Because a lot of the times when they vanish on you, they will be pressing a fast button to take their turn back. Which is, is fine. That's what you're supposed to do. But with Jiren, you could block it and then still take... And then you're able to counter. This is not a DP, meaning it's frame 1. This comes out in frame 4. And I could show you this example much more easier on Master Roshi. Because he also has a frame 4 move. Uh, so remember, since it's frame 4, and if it hits you, it doesn't leave you blue health. So, a lot of the time, frame 4, there's one or two times you could know it's frame 4 when they vanish you and you and they want to press a button. So I'm going to set Master Roshi for his, when he turns very beefy, uh, <laughs> buff old man. So when I vanish him, and I'm trying to take my turn back, he frame 4 dp uh, frame 4 counter me because that move gains armor on frame 4 so he's able to counter me and punish me for that there's characters like fujito who has a counter that's frame 4 and anybody in the game who has a counter it's frame 4 unless you have a special input that lets you use meter for it and then it's usually frame 1 even fidel has a super that's frame 1 on startup but it causes one bar to do, so you have to keep that in mind. And stuff like that can help you in really sticky situation. If your opponent vanish like that, or you want them to back you back off. You just don't want to throw it out there in very dumb situations. But in situations you know, they know it's their turn, you could throw them off just like that. I think it. Uh, this is something that really plays into uh, what we were just talking about before, too, is that jabs take six frames so you know minus five is a safe value in a string because they don't have time to jab you but since a counter comes out on frame four that's something faster that you can use if you know someone thinks it's their turn and they're just gonna mash through on a close yes because if i have value. if you have the computer after vanish you are gonna win this situation all the time you are going to be pressing this button and no matter how hard they will repress in their butts and you will be winning. All right, so let's move away from the uh, the frame data universal stuff and let's talk about scaling because scaling is something that happens across the entire cast. Um, for those unaware, scaling is how the move you start a combo with affects the damage output in a combo. For example, if you start a combo with a light attack, you won't do as much damage as if you had started the combo with a medium attack. And that's because because light attacks are easier to hit, the game scales the damage. So actually, and for example, yeah, and I'm sorry. No, for example, with 
with the light scaling like he was talking about if I do a simple combo from the light I'm gonna do the almost the same combo and end it with the slider knockdown I did 3400 but if I do the exact same combo and even don't add too much attacks with a medium which is this button you can see already the damage difference how already catching up and 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 lead up to the same side of knockdown and I did much more damage than I did with the light even though the light lets you add more hits in because you have more inputs or a few more jabs in it and you might gain a little more meter the damage is significantly different and scale and there are things within a combo that can scale as well too, right? Like I believe when you use a super dash mid combo, it scales. Um, when you use a vanish mid combo, it causes scaling. Yes, yeah, a lot of things like key blast and super dash have to. Um, super dash is always the time. Key blast is a rule to that with certain characters, but super dash as the beginning or even in the middle of the combos heavily help uh, scales your combo. So if you could always avoid it. To not super dash is, is a vice. I was actually going to say you have the perfect character to demonstrate this with because Goku Black has a way to combo like the normal bread and butter without his super dash because of that teleport. Can we look at the damage differences yeah. there? Yeah, so usually when most people 2H, they have to super dash to follow up the combo. So if I just keep it simple and, and keep it the bread and butter that did 3100. As you saw, one was 3370 and the other one was 30, uh, 3505 and that makes a big difference. Now imagine if the combo was any longer, the damage scaling would be much higher and you were able to do much more damage because of it. The extra two 300 will, will help you significantly when you're going to need to kill with your super and when you call an assist to do more damage. Um, just as a footnote. To, I, off the top of my head, mediums get the best scaling in the game. Is that right? Yes, medium gets 100% full damage. Forbidden gets 105%. Forbidden. Let's just say 100 because I don't want to give out wrong information, but the second hit of the auto combo gives out full damage. Medium gives out full damage. And heavy gives out 80 or 90% of full damage. 5LO gives you full damage if you like clip them with the second part of auto combo? The the second part of the auto combo gives you full damage and is also in the community called the forbidden hit because uh, it seems like it actually does more damage than it's supposed to. Gotcha. Does that apply to the third hit of auto combo too or only the second hit? It depends on what character but most of the time it does scale just like a medium. But yes, it does. Okay, good to know.